Thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, it's been a long and lonely summer, lockdown, whatever you want to call it. It seems to be going on forever and ever. How's it been for you? Uh, very mixed, up and down, um, around the town. <laughs> it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been a, a roller coaster to be honest. But um, again, another opportunity to strengthen myself ment mentally and physically. Because the start of lockdown was obviously very emotional with you suffering a couple of family losses, almost back to the back, it seems to me. That must have been a really desperate time for you and all of your family. Yeah, most definitely. Um, very two close losses. Um, my dad and my nan. So that's my, um, my dad's mum. Yeah, they, they passed around three to four days apart. Um, very very technical situation. Like it was so, it was it was it was, yeah, it was a bad situation for um, everyone really. But we had to just keep moving forward. Um, everyone had to stay as close as they could. You know, there was there was, you know, ups and downs within the whole thing. But just got to keep going. I want to take you back to the middle of March. When, in theory, there was a fight coming up in April and there was talk of another fight. There was talk of the WBO fight, a Joe Smith fight. There was all, all sorts of talk because you, you rushed out to Spain and had that fight, didn't you? Because, if, yes. if I'm not mistaken, the WBO were insisting on you having another, on another fight. Just talk me through that crazy period there, pre the crazy COVID period. Um, again, you know, I came back from Russia, had my little, my time to to reassess, to get myself back into things. Um, and again, I was ready, I was firing, ready to get back out there, ready to build my name back up, ready to get another world title shot. And then COVID happened. Again, I was meant to fight Lyndon Arthur in April. That got postponed. No one knew how serious it would be. Then lockdown happened officially. Uh, it's just literally, it's been one of the things where it's been like, <laughs> it's been like a lifeline, up and down. Um, now we're set again for me and Lennon Arthur to fight in October, but he's taking a fight that's class is risky, um, that, that he's going to be fighting on this Friday. And um, yeah, the journey just continues, man. Um, one thing that lockdown's taught me is that enough, tomorrow is not promised. <laughs> so mm -hmm. work every day and enjoy every day as, as if it could be a loss. Um, that's not even thinking negative. I'm a, I'm a very positive person, but it's reality. You know, um, just keep moving, man. Lyndon Arthur was telling me that he thinks everything happens for a reason, which is a, a, a good philosophy, because he said, even though he hadn't pulled out of the April the 11th fight, he'd been really sick, he'd been really ill, and there was, there was every chance, judging by what he was saying, that you wouldn't have been facing the real Lyndon Arthur had you fought him on April the 11th. Well, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's life, and if you look at the history of boxing, that's happened. That's happened. Um, you know, in boxing, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna say that Kovalev didn't fight the the best hands in the yard. It's, it's, just, it's just nonsense. You know, it happens in boxing. If you look through the history of sport and boxing, there's world champions that had you know Floyd Mayweather took with a torn rotator cuff, you know, broken hand. You know, um, George Foreman fought with a broken hand. Mike Tyson fought with what is it, bronchitis or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then they they mentioned it after the fight. So. Again, it happens, you know. Um, I went through my little complications before Russia, but again, it was a big opportunity. Um, it's just how boxing works, you know. That we're, we're prize fighters, and that's just how things go sometimes. So, um, I want him to be 100%. I want to be 100% as well. And um, we'll just see how it all plans out, man. Dex Spellman is not an easy man. He's a man that doesn't get hurt. He's a man that's tough. When he loses... Every single round, every single second of every round is contested. <laughs> do, you, do you see this as a dangerous fight for Lyndon? Especially, as you say, you and him, you know, you could fight in October. Um, I feel like every fight's a dangerous fight. I've always had that mentality. You can't take no one lightly. You can't feel like you're just going to fight this guy and then fight this guy next because that's, that's a fight for me to warm up. Um, if you've got a mentality of a, of a fighter or as a boxer, it's to keep yourself sharp, you know, keep yourself active, keep winning your fights, keep progressing, keep learning. But if you're having a fight just to pass time or to get him out of the way, that's not a good mentality. So I personally believe any fight's risky. 
I've said this from the beginning of my career. Boxing is is one sport. It's not like football or basketball. Um, every fight could potentially be a, a boxer's last fight. You know, we've seen it time and time again. So mm. it could it could it could even be a situation where you don't get hurt physically. You could you know hurt your hurt your hand. You know, you could you could hurt your Achilles. Any, anything. So it's one of them. It's one of them sports. Don't take nothing for granted. You know, <laughs> um, if you're fighting, fight for the right reasons. Well, Lyndon Arthur is fighting for the right reason. He's fighting for the reason to finally get you in the ring and emerge from under the radar where he's been for most of his career. That's his yeah. reason for fighting. And um, as I said to him before, and I've said publicly before, focus on yourself. Because <laughs> you focus it on me, again, you're going to eventually run into me. And um, I'm a person that's always been focused on myself, my own progression. I thought like that's why I've risen so quickly. And um, in this fight, when I fight Lyndon Offer, it's still going to be me f- focusing on myself. I'm going to worry about what I'm doing good, what I'm doing bad, what I need to improve on rather than what he does. So, um, yeah, man, when we do fight, it's going to be an entertaining fight, you know, for the, for the fans. Hopefully there's a crowd there. That's what I want. And um, give the fans a, a show that, uh, that they won't forget. Do, do you feel that you need a crowd, Anthony? Can you imagine fighting inside the BT bubble in front of 60 or 70 people? Or do you need the crowd? Do you thrive off that crowd? Do you look at that crowd when you get in the ring? Um, I wouldn't say I need a crowd, but I, I want a crowd. From what I have grown up seeing boxing as, you know, believe what I believe boxing to be, when I first ever said, so I want to be a boxer, is when I saw Matt Tyson against um, I it was Spinks. And he walked out. 91 and, seconds. Uh, the 91 seconds and the, the arena was jam-packed. That, for me, there's no feeling like, yeah, there's people watching, but the camera will look red light on it, and you know, thousands of people, you know, chanting, screaming, um, going crazy, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's no feeling like it. So I'm, um, I'm one of the people, yeah, I grew up in East London, <laughs> but this is a profession, you know, it's boxing, and there's, there's nothing like it when you've got a crowd roaring and cheering. Whether they, even when they're cheering against you, you know, in, in Russia, everyone yeah. was cheering against me, but I still enjoyed it. I still loved it. It's that, it's that, it's that, um, that occasion. And do you think, not just because of your Russia experience, the 11 rounds with uh, Kovalev, do, do you think that when it comes to you and Lyndon Arthur, you'll just have that extra edge? Or is that something you don't allow yourself to think? You just worry you focus about yourself, not about your opponent? I literally, I always focus on myself. You know, um, you've never heard me talk negatively about myself. It's true. Um, yeah, in any, in any way, shape or form. It's always been for me progression, elevating and demonstrating. And again, I had, I sound like a broken record now, <laughs> but I have to speak the facts. I had 12 amateur fights and I rose very quickly to a world title fight as a professional. And that's, in my opinion, that's down to how focused I was on myself, how focused I was on getting better each fight, working on different things, um, getting that knockout, you know, because you knock somebody out, you climb the rankings quicker, you know, you create more attention around yourself. Um, that's what it is for me. Self-focus, self-preservation, and then you demonstrate do you think, in, let's do ideal world scenarios, even though boxing is not an ideal world and the world at the moment isn't an ideal world, do you, do you, would you have preferred a fight with Lyndon Arthur now and a first crack at Sergei Kovalev in May of next year? Because you learned a lot from the fight with Kovalev. You know, you, know, you learned a lot during that fight. But do you think that going into a bit more experience might have been a different fight? Oh, 100%. You know... I wouldn't say that one more fight with someone like Lyndon Arthur would have made any difference. You know, um, I had a mentality in the Kovalev fight and that was, I have to win this fight by knockout. I said it in a build-up. I said it when I got there. When me and you was in Russia, yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to go out there and have a boxing match and try and win on yeah. points. I feel like the only way I'm going to Russia, I've seen too many, many fights. I've watched boxing too many times and seen decisions that I didn't agree with or that a majority of fans didn't agree with based on it being the bigger name or based on where the fight was or based on who the judges were. I just said, the only way you're certain of anything is if you win by knockout, if the fight gets stopped in your favour. Um, so I said it. I'm going to hurt Kovalev at some point, which I did. You did. <laughs> and I'm going to go for it. And I'm not 
ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not in regret about the way I did things. The only thing I would say I should have done differently was how composed I was once I hurt him. Yeah. And that's the only little, the little tweak I would have made because I said I'm going to hurt him. I'm going to go for it. And I'd rather it happened the way it did rather than it went to points. And I've believed in my heart that I won. And they gave the decision to him because he had the, he, he was the world champion. Because he's Kovalev. Because he's Kovalev. It was in his back garden. He had the fight set up with Canelo next, which is a big money fight. That would have upset me so much more. But I'm happy that I gave it everything. I showed what I'm made of. I showed myself what I'm made of. And um, just keep progressing, keep moving forward. But it's only human nature. You know, what, that, that point when he was hurt, and he was hurt, it was right above me. It was four feet above my head. Yeah. And he was gone. He was gone. And yeah. it's understandable that you rushed in. Some of the greatest fighters in history have yes. rushed in too quick, Anthony. Don't, yes. don't be too harsh on yourself. Yeah, no, definitely. And again, I'm someone that studies the sport. I watch the sport. You know, Sponge, you, Bunch, you saw me in the amateurs, you know, when I won yeah. the box cup. I That's when I was seven amateur fights in and I won the box cup. And I've always had that thing. I'm going to go out there and give it my all. And um, whatever happens, happens. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. Just give it your all. That's it. If you don't give it your all, that's where the regret comes. And I'm just going to say something for the people watching this. When you said there it was Kovalev's backyard, you're not joking. That was less than two <laughs> miles from the tenement block where he grew up and where from the age of 11 and 12, he was washing cars, not going to school. So, so when we say backyard, we're not joking. We're telling the absolute truth. Let's move back to, to Lyndon Arthur. Let, let's hope he comes through. Well, nothing against Dex Bellman, but it's, it's the Lyndon Arthur fight that, that you're looking at. Is you, your understanding that that's a possibility for October on the, on, along with Dubois, uh, uh, Dubois and Joyce? Is that your understanding? Yes, that's the plan. Um, to fight on the, the undercard of Dubois and Joyce, just like before. Same um, show, same build-up. Um, that's the plan. And, you know, <laughs> only Spellman can, can upset that plan. You know, I might even get out in September. I'm still contemplating it because um, I'm itching as well. I want to get out there. Yeah. Um, so it's just one of the things, you know, no one knows what's going to happen in boxing. <laughs> Spellman can go out there and knock Lindon off out in first round. I hope that don't happen. But... That's boxing for you. So, again, I'm going to be watching the fight live. I'm going to watch it live. And um, hopefully Lyndon comes through it. And then me and Lyndon can have an interesting fight in October. Do you think, you, do you think you'll need more rounds? Because you had a couple of rounds, I know, in Spain. But it was last August, that fight. And you're talking about fight in October. So what's that, 14 or so months? Do you think that you might need, not want, do you think you might need a couple of rounds? What's your gut feeling? Um, got a feeling. I just feel like I'm a lion, man. That that's yeah. not a no cliche saying. That's not no, no um branding thing. It's just that I feel like I've 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 always said it and I've proven it. You know, no, I don't care what all these guys say. No one is going to Russia to fight Kovalev. <laughs> with 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 the experience I had and even the position I was in. You know, I was in a position where I'm a prospect. Everyone was talking about me. I had a lot to lose. Um. And again, the, it was almost like the impossible going out to Russia and winning by knockout against someone like Kovalev. But it's my mentality. I just feel like if, 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 if we're living on planet Earth and we're walking on the street, anything's possible. And then again, if I pulled that off in, in Russia, I would have been in the history books. And that's what I want, yeah, you know, to be in the history books. At the age I am now, you know, I started boxing when I was 19, I'm 28 now. I can't become, you know, the youngest ever, ever champion. I can't become the... Um, all the other records that you want to break yeah, I can yeah. only do what, what's achievable to me and that's going out to Russia would have been a, 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 a world record achievement do you get what I'm saying um, I want to be one of the least experienced best fighters ever <laughs> that's a great <laughs> title that, do you get what I'm saying Someone that's a great that title such, yeah such, a, such small experience but they made so much of what, what they had and um, that's again little things like that motivate me so, so let's go to October. Will you have too much on the night for Lyndon Arthur? I know you don't talk badly about your opponents, but will you have too much, especially taking into account your Russia experience? Yeah, I feel like um, even without the Russia experience, I feel like, yes, absolutely. Um, I just feel like I'm a, I'm a better fighter. Um, I feel like I hit harder. Um, I feel like I have more speed, um, better boxing IQ. Um, I've proven that I can I can take a punch, even though the, that's never the goal and objective. It's, yeah. it's to take a punch, but I've proven that I can do that, um, and I can give it. You know, and and there's no quitting me. You know, it's, there's so much attributes, but the only way you find that is when the two people fight. You know, there's all, it's all good and it's all willy nilly. Everyone talking a good game, but 
when the fight happens and you see what everyone's made of. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll say that much. So we've had an emotional roller coaster of a lockdown for you, especially at the start with the losses. And then we're looking at fights now coming up. It could be a good 18 months for you. Could be a good, there could be some really big fights out there for you in the next 18 months. Most definitely. And I, and I, and I strongly believe it will be. Um, nothing, nothing's, nothing's gone downwards. For me, it's only gone upwards. Even though we, yeah, I've got a loss on my record now. Um, it was a record that has no, it was a loss that has no shame. Um, and yeah, I feel like my, my, you know, my morale's risen, to be honest. You know, sometimes people are made by their experiences. And I believe that the struggles we go through in life, how we deal with them, it determines our character and, and who we are as a person. And I feel like I've grown from it. I feel like I'm stronger mentally. I've become stronger physically. Um, and I'm, look, I'm just looking forward to it, man. Um, and just and finally, one, one final thing. Have you got a message for Lyndon Arthur as he makes his way to the ring, as he's, as he's, as he's getting in that ring in front of 65 people to fight Dex? But have you got a message for him? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Um, come through that fight so you can fight me. And um, let's, 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 because cause he called out my name. You know, it's one of, them, one of them things. So he called out my name. We made the fight happen. So that's the fight I want to happen. Okay, I'm going to ask you one final question because it's, a, it's a, not a joke question. It's a serious question, but it might be considered yeah. a joke. Roy Jones, Mike Tyson. Oh. What was your reaction when you found out that it was actually going to happen? What was your reaction, Anthony? I'm, do I'm doing it now. Oh, uh, yeah. That was mine as well. Oh, no. I said, no. I said, no. I, look, if you look again, I'm, put, I'm Anthony Yard, yeah? And if you look at who I've always paid homage to the most, it's three fighters I've paid homage to the most. And they're all retired now. Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. and Floyd Mayweather. They're the three I've mentioned the most. Yes, then you got Muhammad Ali, you got the Chavez Jr. Yeah, yeah. You got these people, but the three I've mentioned the most, the three who I've styled myself on, who I've studied the most, are them three. And two of them are now fighting each other. That's for me, for me, that's heartbreaking. You know, they're two retired fighters who are Hall of Famers, legendary. For me, Roy Jones was the most naturally gifted fighter in history. Naturally gifted. I mean, he done things in the ring that can't be taught. Don't care what anybody yeah. says. He pulled them off. He was the first to do a lot of things. And then you've got someone like Matt Tyson, who is a, a world, not only a boxing icon, a sporting icon, who is probably the most entertaining <laughs> athlete ever to live. Why? I, just, I don't understand it, man. I don't want them to fight. Um, I don't want anyone to get hurt. You know, they're both, I think they're both in their 50s, right? Yeah, 51 and 54. Exactly. To me, that's not the ages of two people that should be punching and hurting each other. Um, I'm not against anything to do with ages, you know, I'm inspired and motivated by a lot of people that are over 50, but in terms of seeing two people going out there and hurting each other in a dog sport like boxing, I feel like they should be passing on the information and giving it to the younger generation like myself. <laughs> okay, so the last question then, before I say goodbye, and thanks for, so much for your time is, okay, you say that now, but it's the first bill's 10 o'clock <laughs> and it's your last chance to buy the pay-per-view. What are you doing? Are you, are you, are you watching or are you turning away? <laughs> I have to watch it. <laughs> but you know, it that's why that's why they're fighting because they know that everyone's gonna watch it. You know, you have to, even though you might be against it. But sometimes you're, you know, you're. Uh, everyone was against Floyd Mayweather, but they still paid to watch him fight, right? Because it's an entertainment thing, you can't help it. Everyone was against the Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor because it's mixing the two sports. But everyone. But still we tuned it. in. We tuned in. So it's one of the things, man. You know, uh, Roy Jones was at my fight in Russia, and he he's one of the first people, last people I looked at. And then it's like, that's the first little bit of nerves I've got. Nerves I've got Cause I was like, that's Roy Jones Jr. Winking at me <laughs> doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, that's where the, it's, a, it's, a, it's an overwhelming feeling because Roy Jones in my opinion is, you know, top three, four ever in history. Well, you, you know what? I often agree with you and I do agree with you absolutely 100% from the look on your face and to the fact that I'll be tuning. <laughs> Anthony, thanks so much for your time and we'll speak to you again very soon. Thank you, Bunce, thank you.